Hello friends, welcome to MOM, the Hindu News Analysis Program presented by Diksha Space. Today in this program we are going to look after December 25th, 2020, the Hindu newspaper. Today's first article, Economic Revival Beating Predictions, RBI Bulletin. This article we are discussing in the context of an RBI Bulletin which was saying that the economic revival, what is happening in the post-pandemic era of Indian economy is going to beat all the predictions what have been said by various organizations, various sectors with respect to economic revival. So in this article, it, the RBI bulletin was saying that the economic revival, what is going on is actually reflecting in the present growth what is being seen and the economic conditions are going to improve in the agriculture and manufacturing sector from November onwards. However, in the industrial sector, interest rates are going to give a stable financial condition is what is being said. Despite there are few of the challenges which are presently opposing or against the economic growth, but yes, India, various stakeholders are going to put the economy in the growth trajectory is what is being expected. However, with respect to government's initiative or government's financial fiscal initiatives, it is being said counter cyclical fiscal measures are important in order to sustain the momentum of recovery. Counter cyclical fiscal measures are being spoken here. What is this counter cyclical fiscal measures which are proposed for the government? It's a policy measure which counteract the effects of economic cycle. For example, counter cyclical fiscal policy is an action when economy is slowing down which would include increasing government spending or cutting taxes to help stimulate the economy. So it is all about increasing the government spending is what is being suggested here. And here we are speaking about revenue expenditure of the government and capital expenditure of the government. On the front of revenue expenditure, where social protection schemes for underprivileged and labor markets are addressed, their recovery is likely and Un uneven in various domains. So their revenue expenditure is inevitable from the government and in order to make this sector more stabilized. With respect to capital expenditure, it is collapsed in the first six months of this fiscal, fiscal. However, the priority has to be increased and public investment in health, social uh, housing, education, environmental protection is the need of the hour to build a more resilient and inclusive economy is what is being said. Here, however, with the revival of the economy, we can understand that there is better handling of pandemic and the stimulus impact is going to give results is what is being seen here. So this is what the understanding about the economy with respect to the present status, what it is happening and what is being expected in future is going to beat all the predictions is what is the hope presented by the RBI bulletin and the government side fiscal uh, initiatives with respect to revenue expenditure and capital expenditure are need to be taken care. A government has to work more on fiscal policy measures is what is being suggested. Next article, unions boycott consultation on draft rules for labor codes. This article we are discussing in the context of the major unions uh, have boycotted the consultation meeting with respect to the rules for the formation of labor codes. As we all know, the labor codes were passed with respect to wages, social security, occupational safety and industrial relations. So in this laws which were passed, the government was holding a consultative meeting with respect to various labor unions in order to draft rules for the implementation. However, 10 out of 12 central trade unions declined to attend this meeting because of having a consultation of these four codes which are being thought of for the implementation from the next financial year in a day is not feasible and the committee or the union is going to raise this issue in front of international labor organization against violation of tripartite consultation process because this is such a big uh, law which is going to make such a huge impact on labor co codes and so many organizations attending in the consultation meeting and in a day if you want to consult or draft the rules with respect to implementation of this, I don't think there are going to be any positive or successful discussions with respect to them. So that is where union boy, unions 
the, those are all india trade unions have boycotted this however confederation of indian industries director general have said it is welcome move towards uh, labor law reforms in india which is going to be beneficial for the economic growth of the country so with respect to labor laws we need to have a few detailed understanding where you will find a specific video for all these labor laws in india which are being passed Next article is a comprehensive understanding that is the farmers protest truths and half truths. So as we all know there is an ongoing protest by farmers against the government passing on three farm bills that is in the monsoon session. However in every day's article or in every day's uh, news or social media we are going to find many of the dimensions with respect to the protest many of the dimensions of the government which are being put forward. But there are some of the truths and there are some of the half truths which are being spoken always whenever there is a debate or discussion going on with respect to the subjects so in this article we are going to look after the truths of the farmers truths of the government half truths of the farmers and half truths of the government and at the end we will be looking after what is the political truth about subsidies is what is being discussed in the four dimensions or four parameters in this article so with respect to protesters truth if you look at the farmers of punjab and haryana where around 45 percent of marketable surplus of wheat and rice comes from that region that is because apmc regulations and msps have made sure that in this region it is surplus with respect to wheat and rice 50 years ago in order to uh, attract the farmers to participate in green revolution these provisions were made however the program worked best in punjab and haryana because of progressive farmers were at the political helm in these states but other crops did not receive such prominence because the wheat and rice which has got the prominence from the apmcs and msps in punjab and haryana region did not get the same prominence from the apmcs and about msp also about other crops there are concerns with respect to middlemen where it is being spoken about but in punjab and haryana region they are functioning as lifeline links they are mostly fertilizer and pesticide agents money lenders and general knowledge providers so they are not seen as some uh, one who is exploiting the farmers over there apmc mandis those who charge transaction fee or cess in the state and that goes to state pocket and that money is being used for development of better roads and storage facilities for the farmers so the first apmc and msp which is being spoken about a negative way or it is being said is actually beneficial for the punjab and haryana region second middlemen what is being spoken about is, is promising and it has been helping for the re farmers of those region third apmc mandis though they are seen as an exploitative but yes they have promoted for the benefit of the farmers and the fourth contract farming about which government is speaking about their small farmers complain about big contractors easily because they can refuse the commitment or they can go back saying that the produce which has been come up is not to the expectation what is being given second they can not or the farmers who are giving the land for the contract farming they might not get it back because that has to be renewed over again and again and the other contractors might not be interested in the same farmer who has done the deal with the other contractors so there will be a lobby among the contractors about the land to be given so these are two major challenges which farmers are seeing and they are truth up from the protesters end what has been seen and what is the truth from the government's end if you look at msp what farmers are asking to make a law it is not a law from the uh, long end when it was introduced it was a policy always and now the farmers what they are demanding is to make a law is actually not fair is what government is asking like uh, any other producers agriculture produce should also obey the market price fluctuations is what the expectation of the government is as of now since there is no shortage of food and the the same provisions what we made during green revolution will not be no longer applicable at the present context so with respect to msp it has been a policy and it will remain a policy is what the stand of the government is with respect to contract farming what farmers are saying is truth but then the government end if you look at these tiny plots of the farmers will be made available free they can move out of the village and seek job elsewhere is what government stand is and the third point what government truth is that the huge subsidies what state is giving is around 2 to 2.5 percent of gdp and the subsidies what indian farmers are receiving is higher than the farmers of united states 
European Union and Japan. If you look at in India, the subsidy ranges to around 45 to 50 percent. But in US, it is around 20 billion dollars. In U a, uh, European Union, it is 39 billion dollars and in Japan, it is around 46 billion dollars. So this is what the government is spending as of now on subsidies and it is huge amount with respect to farmers what is being done. So this is the truths on the both ends which are being spoken about. But let us see what are the half truths which are being spoken. With respect to protesters, if you see the farmers demand with respect to rolling back the new agricultural bill to make a MSP law. Uh, which has not been true because MSP was from long time a policy and it is not a law from the long time. So as farmers are saying, no, it was a law from the long time and it has to be made a law for the future is also not correct. And that is what is being sent, said here. And the second half truth is protesters are refusing to fully acknowledge that the international prices are higher than the domestic prices. Then they are feeling or then they are finding it difficult to sell out to sell out their crops outside the country this is also not true because uh, that situation has not arisen and that is not true which needs to be accepted on the other end the half truths of government if you look at about contract farming where it is saying that the small farmers can free up their land they can go out of the villages and find the jobs but when these things happen what about the other difficulties what about contractual farming the farmers are going to face suppose the farmer who is selling their produce and when they want the land back what is the provision being made these are the two major problems what we are seeing in respect to contract farming where government is actually justifying their act but that has to be made understood that the farmers will get their land back whenever they want and they will not find any difficulty in selling their produces so this is the first half truth and the second half truth if you have to remember that the big farmers not the small and marginal farmers usually go to mandis because farmers find it difficult to go to mandis because of transportation cost so most of the small farmers are not benefited by the mandis only because of higher transportation cost which they have to incur because of long distance or long accessibility of these mandis. So if number of mandis can be increased, then the farmers will definitely find mandis as the preferred choice, which needs to be understood. As the government is sending a message that India has is spending highest amount of subsidy, that is around 45 to 50 billion dollars in a year. But if you look at an individual cost, it will not come at least 48 dollars per farmer if you, it is divided. Whereas in US, it is $7,000 per farmer, which is a very high amount compared to Indian context. So here we need to understand that in US, there are not even 2% of US farmers below poverty line. But in India, we have 85% of Indian farmers. Those are small and marginal farmers below small and um, below poverty line. And with respect to social security, US has much better social health cover. But in India, health, education and unemployment is very poor as compared to social cover in US. So comparison with US with respect to the subsidy benefits by the government is not a reasonable point which needs to be understood here. Today, MSP which is applicable for wheat and rice but also to other 22 crops but they are not being uh, available or being made strongly for the other crops only because of lobby of the farmers in the northwest region. Yes, in the earlier years there was food shortage but because of which has got the attention about APMC's and MSP but Punjab and Haryana region has got an ecological crisis which is being said because of MSP that is the increased usage of pesticides and um, other chemical fertilizers in order to uh, high have and high productivity has led to groundwater depletion and uh, groundwater uh, contamination is the major con concern which has been raised. Yes, but this problem has been spoken about from 1986 report which was uh, recommended by SS Johal. If you remember, please remember this because this issue has been pending from very long time. But this discussion was not made till now where this is has started after introducing this farm bills is actually an half truth which government is trying to put up here the understanding however the last understanding is the benefit of subsidy is not only for the farmer it is for the central gov government employees also 
it is for the ministers who are benefit corporates benefit armed forces benefit because they get ration at subsidized prices poor children who are getting mid day meals they are also benefited universities are also benefiting prisons are also benefiting when the particular subsidy which is withdrawn by the population is serving the whole length and breadth of the population then i don't think there is any concern with respect to this but if you look at the other end of the discussion whenever the problem arises like if you see is cancelling revenue foregone then budget and business people usually start protesting then if you take down any promotion reservation in promotion which was a discussion point of view then again government employees bureaucrats started pushing their voices you have seen any of the perks which are given to mls and mps which are given then law maker starts objecting so subsidies are bad only for other people never for the oneself so we will raise voice only when we are affected not the others are affected so if there are so many truths and half truths and overwhelming politically unacceptable truths which are going on the ground then we find it very difficult to find a common ground where we can solve our issues and problems is what is being discussed here so please remember this article has very beautifully portrayed all the dimensions with respect to msp dimensions with respect to contract farming dimensions with respect to subsidies what are being given dimensions with respect to uh, subsidies of farmers and subsidies of other departments who are going to be beneficial so this is very general understanding which is very very important for everyone to take care of next article learning to go this article we are discussing in the context of permanent quota of arbitration yesterday's news we have seen that big hague has come up with in favor of energy firm crane plc over retrospective tax demand worth 24500 crores which was pursued by india's taxmen since 2014 the arbitration said that that it is against the violation of india uk bilateral investment pact however here we have to develop an understanding with respect to the damage which was arrived that is 1.4 billion dollars is due to tax authorities decision to force and subsequently sell the company share and freeze dividends payments as well as tax refunds to recover disputed dues even as arbitration process was underway at this point of time where the damage is around 1.4 billion dollars which government is expected to pay out for the crane energy is actually going to be a huge fiscal implication on the government end at this point of time we have discussed also that three months in this three months duration of time this is the second defeat with respect to india which has been on the arbitration end that was in singapore so now at this point of time the government is taking a role where it cannot be different for crane energy or vodafone and the government has taken a stand with respect to going against an appeal for vodafone matter in singapore and with respect to crane energy also so over a period of time we will have to see how india is going to look after these things and finance minister nirmala sitaraman has re- re- uh, repeatedly asserted that the india is going to retain the sovereignty right to levy taxes and this is going to be a contention or it is going to be a debatable issue where the changes made in the finance act 2012 were moved forward and taken down retrospectively with respect to taxes so at this point of time the government has to take care uh, the aspirations to rope in global investments which must be matched by ensuring policy stability and creating a robust regulatory framework is what is trying to be explained by the author here so ultimately the need of the hour is to understand that the aspirations of the global investments must be understood and it needs to be matched ensuring the political stability and creating a robust regulatory framework today's next article provocation trap this article we are discussing in the context of the rocket attack on us embassy in baghdad on sunday where american leaders and administration have claimed that this is the largest attack in a decade in the green zone which has been done the administration of donald trump and senior leaders have pointed out at the iran saying that the rockets were supplied by them so the tensions with respect to iran and us has started as we all know in 2018 trump united states trump government unilaterally reimposed the sanctions on the iran at this point of time there was an unstabilized or unstable relations between us and iran which were going on and the two events like in the month of january the uh, us uh, attack 
और यूएस किल्ड टॉप ईरानियन जनरल कासिम सुलेमानी इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट एंड द सेकेंड द किलिंग ऑफ फक्री जदे द टॉप साइंटिस्ट बाई इजरेली एजेंट्स दीज टू इवेंट्स वर प्रोवोकिंग द ईरान टू टेक द स्टेप्स हव एवर द अटैक ऑन द असेंबली और एम्बेसी और द डिप्लोमेटिक मिशन इज एक्चुअली नॉट एक्सेप्टेड एज वी ऑल नो देर इज गोइंग टू बी अ ट्रांसिशन फ्रॉम द ट्रंप गवर्नमेंट टू जो बिडन एंड जो बिडन हैज प्रोमिस दैट देर विल बी रिवाइवल ऑफ टॉक्स बिटवीन ईरान एंड यू एस एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दीज टाइप्स ऑफ अटैक्स विल ओनली further deteriorate the relationship between iran and us it will not help to build the cordial relation what is required however there are issues or scenes where it is seen that apart from attack on the embassy the iran has gone through proxy wars where it attacked oil facilities and tankers in the gulf over the past 2 years at this point of time the need of the hour is to understand to give a chance to bidan administration to reboot diplomacy which will be in the larger interest of tehran as well as wider west asia today's next article are children being introduced to coding too early in life this article there are many questions which are being asked but i will comprehensively uh, take the knowledge what needs to be taken down from this article today as we are all seeing after this pandemic there has been growing with respect to coding among the 4 to 5 years of children in order to improve their cognitive skills in order to improve their logical reasoning skills in order to improve their um, understanding with respect to the various dimensions of the studies is what is being tried and is being promoted by various organizations and edtech companies in the minds of parents it is like a fear of missing out many of the students they are children when they say they have learned javascript they have learned some other language usually parents feel insecure that their children are going missing out the opportunity and they are getting them enrolled with respect to this however in this article there has been a focus or uh, understanding that at the age between 4 to 7 years is very important age to grow internally rather than externally this is the time where their mind where their internal soul gets developed the environment actually makes the students to improve their cognitive abilities improve their logical thinking and improve a personal touch which is required among the humans ultimately because a person cannot be connected with the computer entire his life he has to develop relationship among the society he has to develop emotions with respect to the people around him and that can be possible only when he is internally developed during this age period with the increase of uh, screen time or the with the increase of technology there are few of the drawbacks which have been seen like in girl children usually menarche is seen at the age of 12 but that has reduced to 8 years this shows the side effects of technology or screen time which has been increased at their very young age is going to affect them biologically is going to affect them psychologically also the eye of a children usually develops in the first 4 years of time and at this time usually it needs a proper care it needs a proper understanding for their growth mentally and physically so the physical development needs to be given more focus rather than the logical or cognitive skills what are being tried by using this coding technologies yes the future is going to be about a technical revolution and the students or the children made to be empowered with respect to accommodate with the technological revolution but that should not be a drawback or that should not be an disadvantages for the students in order to empower themselves biologically also is what is being tried to be comprehended from this article so this is about today's the hindu news article friends we'll meet up with again new edition till then take care study well jai hind jai bharat